Got some rational expressions for you this morning. Okay, these things work just like fractions. How about we first go through and add and subtract rational expressions? Here we go. I'm up here, I'm taking a look at this. It appears I have one over x plus two over x minus five. Okay, can I add those two the way they are? Nah, see, what do I need? I need a common denominator. And what would a common denominator be if we had one? Mm, yeah, um, you might think it's just x, but it's not. This is an entire mm, factor of our common denominator. So our common denominator gonna be x times x minus five. Oh boy. So let's take the original problem. One over x plus two over x minus five. Uh-huh, and like with fractions, what do I multiply that denominator by that the common denominator has? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it appears to be missing an x minus five, and an x minus five. And to not change a dang thing, I need to multiply by one, not just any one, the magic one. Uh-huh, because five over five is one, 10 over 10 is one, and x minus five over x minus five is one. Okay. Now I'm over here. What am I going to multiply this denominator by that the common denominator has? Yes, it appears this denominator is missing an x. So I'm going to multiply by x over x. Now in each one of those terms it goes knock knock. Who's there? How do you multiply the fractions? Straight across. And here I get numerator times numerator. Or x minus 5 times 1 divided by x minus five times x. Okay, and here I'm gonna add it to two over x minus five. Okay, extend that out a little bit. Times x times x. Okay, so what did I do? I multiplied straight across, fine. Do I have a common denominator now? Yes, I do. So now what do I do? Add them. Yeah, I'm gonna add the two. I'm gonna add their numerators. I'm gonna add x minus five plus two x. Okay, all over the common denominator of x minus five times x. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna gather, collect, and combine. Gather, collect, and combine. My 2x and my x are gonna give me 3x divided by x. Ooh. 3x minus five divided by x times x minus five. In the denominator, I use the commutative property of uh, multiplication. And then I can't reduce anything because I don't have a common factor in the numerator. I can only reduce when um, I have it written as a product. And there's nothing I can do. That thing up there is prime. So then, and a flower. But what happens if we were trying to um, subtract? Oh no! What are you gonna do? Right, we can't subtract the two because we don't have a common denominator. In order to find a common denominator, we need to find the factorizations of each denominator. We see there's nothing I can pull out of this one. Oh, but can I factor that one? Oh, I think I can. So then, my numerator, three x squared divided by, oh wee, it's claiming difference of squares. Uh-huh, is this a square of something? 3x. Is that the square of something? 4. So every single time it's 3x plus 4. 3x minus 4. Sure. Okay. And then I'm still going to subtract off x over 3x plus 4. Sure. Okay. It's okay. Mmm. -hmm. Woo wee. 
now that I have my factorization, I can find my common denominator and what would a common denominator be if you had one. Here we see we have two factors in this denominator and one factor in that denominator. They already have these in common, but a common denominator is going to have that additional factor in its denominator. So here are my common denominators, 3x plus 4, sure, times 3x minus 4, sure, because that's the factors of the denominator that need to be included in the common denominator. So to save room, I'll be back up here. What do I need to multiply this denominator by that the common denominator has? Yeah, put a 1 if you have to, but I see I need no additional products. However, over here, I see that this denominator is missing uh, 3x minus 4. Sure, so I need to multiply by 1, not just any 1. The magic one. I need to multiply by 3x minus 4. And 3x minus 4. Now you're really going to be tempted to multiply that denominator out. But whoa, I caution you. Okay, you have a common denominator. Yeah, so now what can you do? Add them. Well, in this case, subtract them. We can subtract their numerators. Okay, see how that denominator looks just like that one? Yeah, so then I'm going to have... 3x squared minus x. Now notice I can put that minus up there. Sure. Uh-huh. Times 3x minus 4. Sure. All over. 3x plus 4 times 3x minus 4. Sure. But wait. There's more. Finish him. And it goes and it goes and it goes. And don't forget to take that minus x along with it. Yeah, so then this guy right here, mm -hmm. that's um, 3x squared. And then the minus x times the 3 is a minus 3x squared. And the minus x times the 4 is a plus 4x. But wait, there's more. That's all over. The common denominator of 3x plus 4 times. 3x minus 4? Sure. I'm going to take it to the top. Yeah. Um, I'll rewrite 3x squared minus 3x squared plus 4x divided by 3x plus 4 times 3x minus 4. Sure. Let's simplify that numerator. Do you see any common factors or common terms or additive inverses? The number that when added to the number, the sum is none. They fight. Oh. And after the dust settles, you're going to be left with a 4x divided by 3x plus 4 times 3x minus 4. Sure. Mm -hmm. Tick, tick. Is there anything left to do? Can I reduce? No, because I have no common factors. So then... Yeah. And a flat.